Hey everybody, it's Master Gallon guys too. Bringing you my review for the latest episode of Agents of Shield, Together or Not at All. And this was a pretty good episode for its development of the story because we get a little bit more information on the people on the surface of the planet, but mainly in its development of Cassius and a little bit more of an understanding of his whole kind of familial relationship and especially with his father and what the circumstances were that kind of led him to be the caretaker of Earth and the Lighthouse. So this episode kind of starts off uh, at after the end of the previous episode. We see Simmons and Fitz and Daisy pretty much trying to regroup. They get the weird object out of Simmons's ear so that way she can hear and everything and not, I presumably, have her brain exploded with it because I would assume that that kind of device would be in place to keep slaves from uh, that Cassius has from revolting. So while that's happening, uh, Cree bodyguard guy kind of comes in. Daisy quickly dispatches him and gets his control rod thing, and they're figuring out how to kind of get away and try and get onto an elevator because, well, they're trying to figure out their escape plan. And at first they're thinking, oh, we'll just take Fitz's ship, but they see that kind of blown up, so they kind of have to figure out to like meet up with Enoch and all that kind of on the surface. So we get to Cassius and his brother, and his brother uses his personal bodyguard to go after the escaped humans and everything and try and contain this whole situation. And of course his bodyguard is kind of similar to Sonara. But he decides to use the weapons that his prey would use, earth weapons, in going after him. So he kind of goes off. He sees that they're trying to use the elevator and kind of like puts it on lockdown. But of course, they're able to escape through the top hatch. And this dude's trying to question people and killing indiscriminately to kind of get his answers. So he's just kind of like skirting around trying to figure out where they're at. So of course, we also see throughout this episode, Coulson and the group trying to figure out what kind of to do. We get that Flint figures out that Tess is dead because everybody's kind of looking for him and he's kind of pissed off about that. And, of course, he has to have a talk from Mac because he wants to turn himself in. But Mac's saying, well, you've got these powers, so you have an obligation to use these to protect these people. Of course, it's kind of a little bit of a Spider-Man kind of moment but not in the way that Matt kind of really wanted it to go, because this is at the point where the others intersect. After a brief kind of tuffle with the with Cassius's brother's henchman, who is able to shoot Fitz, and he's like, crap. They meet up with Deke, who has escaped from his room because he had to blow out the window, and they're back in Grill's quarters. And they're trying to figure out what to do. And of course, with his left, and takes out the head kind of Cree Vicar dude, or I think that's kind of what he's called, the one that gave the gift to Flint. And he did it in a pretty badass way. He wanted everything to be kind of put back, but of course he's pushing it off more on Flint that he wanted to escape or whatnot, and said that more people would be punished and everything, of course. He is searched, and the rocks fall out, and he forms one into a kind of dagger spike ball, and just shoots it pretty much through his head. Damn. Okay. But of course, Sonara kind of comes in and uses this as a point to make a trap, because Cassius is, wants her to kind of go and get Quake and all that. And we do, at some point, see Sonara speak more in this episode, and we see her back and forth and understand the relationship between Cassius and Sonar. Because while they're trying to do this and get the get Daisy and the rest of the SHIELD team, we're learning more about Cassius's relationship with his brother and his father. Figuring out that his brother sees that Cassius has sullied, has Cass, sullied the Cassius name, which Kind of confuses me a little bit going, okay, we're knowing him as Cassius, so evidently that's more the familiar name, so we don't know exactly what Cassius's name is, because we know that his brother's name is Falmac. So, okay, that's kind of a 
other little tidbit, but evidently he had been put in charge of a post and he ran away from it because he was surrounded and outnumbered and everything and saying that he's hanging out with this low-born Cree who had killed his two generals. And while he's doing that, we get a little bit more understanding of the differences between Cassius and Falnet because there's an array of Terran weapons and Cassius has them for their kind of craftsmanship, whereas he would think that this would intersect with his brother trying to kind of bond with him, going that, oh, you like the deadly efficiency of it. He goes, well, I usually prefer a blade because it's more cowardly to shoot from a distance. Okay, so that's kind of where we're getting it at. Because he sees him as his brother being more cowardly, being, since he'd ran from battle and would use more weapons used for long-range combat. And that he wants them more for their craftsmanship and their beauty more than their deadly power. So it's like, okay, that's kind of what we're getting at. And of course, we then get back to what's going on. They're trying to figure out how to get to the surface and everything, and they come up with the idea to use one of the kind of loading bays to get to the trawler to get to the surface. Of course, Deke says that he'll go first to show people how to use his anti-graph thing. And he's like, no, screw that, because everybody's pretty much like, you sold Daisy out, and you've been kind of screwing with us since day one. Now, granted, he has been trying to help them, but he has also been trying to make sure that he does it in such a way that doesn't completely screw over the whole populace of a lighthouse or get him into a dangerous, untenable position. So, I kind of understand the, but I'm more with the agents. So, of course, they're able to get out as Falnax henchman is trying to shoot out. He blasts a hole in the door, but of course, Sinar says, screw you, pretty much, and uses her balls to kill him. And then, of course, they go in and they see, and it's like, crap, what's going on? So, of course, everybody's back up. They're trying to figure out what's going on. But, of course, Flint decides to stay and try and help the people. And Mac and Yo-Yo do as well. So, Coulson and Daisy and the rest pretty much are going to go off and try and go to the surface. But, of course, before they go, Fitz says, Okay, I, I had some weapons. It's going to be on level three. And everyone's like, Damn it! That's where the frickin' roaches are. And he's going, Hey, hey! I did some crazy crap to get here, so... Give me some credit. And, of course, I love Mac and his relationship going, hey, Turbo, Turbo. <laughs> Thank you, man. It, it was just a nice character moment. We got good character moments in this episode, of course, with Cassius and his brother and getting more deep there, but also with Mac and seeing Fitz again and all that and him trying to be a mentor to Flint and, of course, backing him up and trying to help save his people. That's pretty cool. So we'll have to see how that kind of goes. So, of course... They kind of get to the surface, and that's about where we're left off with them. Uh, another portion that we've seen is May and Enoch. May's kind of just trying to watch out what's going on the surface. Of course, the roaches are trying to go after her, but Enoch is able to come up and try and win her over. Of course, she figures out that he was the one that kind of got them here, but he's going, listen, and now I'm trying to help you and everything. And she's going, well, why aren't they going after you? Because... I'm not human. I'm really, I don't have any vital organs that these things want to suck out. So, of course, they're not looking for me. And all this is going on, a gravity storm starts to approach. And this one weird person comes out of nowhere and kind of grabs Enoch and grabs Meg. And we're going, all right, wow, who are these people? So towards the end of the episode, we get focused on May's part and Cassius's part. So, of course, Sinar comes up and says that, of course... Falnax henchman is dead by her own hand. And it's, huh, kind of, instead of reacting in the way that, like, I'll kill you for this, he goes, okay, you're strong enough that you took out my henchman. Maybe you should be with a new master. Of course, this kind of flips off his size, and he grabs one of the guns, it's got a bayonet, and stabs and kills his brother and monologues over it, explaining more of why he's doing it, going, I know I was sent on a suicide mission. Those generals were preventing me from escaping. Sonara killed them so that way we could escape. And, of course, he's gotten his hands dirty. And the blood and everything kind of seen him actually have to get into the effect of actually killing someone 
was a big character moment for him. And I really liked how they did it. It didn't feel overdone or hammy or kind of campy or anything. It felt the natural progression of this character will not take this any longer. No. All right, Sonara, we have to get the Destroyer of Worlds and we can make everything right again. And you really feel for Kasai. He has been put in an untenable position by his family, by both his father and his brother, and it has led him to make hard decisions. So this did a good job of kind of equaling out his character, not just having him be a generic, completely one-dimensional kind of mustache-twirling villain. Does that excuse his actions? No, but it gives greater depth and meaning to what he's doing and why he's doing it. So that's kind of where we're ending off with him. They're just going, all right, we got to keep doing this. And if they've gone to the surface, we got to go sweep up there and get them. We then end off with figuring out what has happened with May and Enoch. And they wake up and he's like, well, they brought us here. And we see this old woman and she has the Robin. So this is the elderly Robin and... Well, that's a pretty big reveal. I'm like, okay, who's going to be the old person that is going to greet them? It's like, oh, all right, that's great. Now we can figure out any other kind of ideas that she has to kind of stopping what has happened to Earth and trying to fix what's going on and what her whole objective is when she saw that vision when she was so young and if she has had time to ruminate or see other visions and other branching pathways that could actually change us and get our group back home and kind of change this horrible kind of future. So I really liked how they kind of set up that it doesn't feel like it's just, oh, now we're going to have the story split up into kind of three camps with Flint, Mac, and Yo-Yo dealing with the inside. We got Coulson and his main group on the surface, going to be meeting up with May and Enoch and everything, and Kasai and Sonara in one corner. It feels kind of interwoven into the point that they'll eventually come to a head, and I'm really looking forward to that. So, those are my opinions on the episode. Tell me what you guys think in the comments below. If you liked it, if you didn't like it, if you agree with me, if you disagree with me. Also, like and subscribe, and I hope you have a good day.